Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2019 Advanced. I'm spending this section and the next one looking at targeted reporting. And what I mean by that is that usually when you're preparing reports, you have a specific target in mind. And the target is very often a specific audience or in project management terms, a specific set of stakeholders. Depending on who these stakeholders are, they might want to know things like what we've achieved on the project so far, where have we got to, or in some cases, what we have achieved recently, what's happened this week, for example. And they might also ask, how do the numbers look? How much have we spent so far? And how are we doing in terms of how much work we've done compared to where we should be at the moment? So this is very much a case of looking at what's happened so far and assessing it. Now, very often for some stakeholders, they're also interested in what's going to happen in the future. So for instance, what's going to happen next? What are we going to be doing next week? And how are the numbers going to be looking in the future? Now, in addition to these various ways of looking at and reporting on a project, we have both the task aspect and the resource aspect to look at as well. Now, this is one of the reasons why there are so many different standard reports in Project 2019. Each of them has a purpose, and very often when you're reporting progress, you may need to use more than one report to cover all aspects of the reporting that you need to cover. What I'm going to do in this section is to introduce you to some of the main reports that are used to report some main aspects of project performance, and then in doing that, I'm also going to look at, for example, different types of chart, charts that we haven't looked at so far, and how you put those together. Now, in order to do this, I'm using version 14 of the website project. So let's start with the types of report that are used for reporting general progress. So let's go to the report tab. We'll go to dashboards. And you can see there we have burn down, cost overview, project overview, so on and so forth. Now, in order to illustrate some of the main options here, let's look at the cost overview report. Now, quite a few bits of this you should be absolutely fine to work out for yourself. So what we have over here is a table and you should now understand where these figures come from. And you should be able to figure out exactly how to build the table at the bottom left there. Although note that all of the columns in that table relate to cost. So this is a case where we have a part of a cost overview report, which is purely giving information about cost. But what I want to look at are the two charts on the right, because both of those have some new features and a couple of things that I need to explain. So let's start with the top one, progress versus cost. Now, the first thing to notice about it is that there are two lines in that chart. There is a cumulative percent complete, line where the values will be in percent and the one on the right cumulative cost the red line the values are in dollars so we actually have two vertical axes percent complete on the left and cumulative cost on the right and i'll show you how we achieve that in just a moment note also that on the horizontal axis we have dates and notice that the dates generated for the axis are a little bit difficult to cope with, really. I'm sure they're right, but they're a strange combination of dates. So let's see how we put this particular chart together. Well, first of all, let's go into the Chart Tools Design tab and see what sort of chart it is. So we're going to go to Change Chart Type. And you can see here the type of chart is a custom combination. And with a custom combination, you can put two or more charts together on, in this case, the same set of axes. And the way you do this is by having two series. Now, one series is a cumulative percent complete, the blue one. And one is the cumulative cost, the red one, or possibly the orange one, I should say. And the way that we give the second series its own axis, a secondary axis, is by checking the box on the right there. So that's a custom combination. I could, if I wanted to, have one of them as not a line, but have it as something else, just by selecting that drop down and choosing the chart type from there. I could, for instance, do something like a column chart if I wanted to and click on OK and the chart would look like that. So a little bit different. 
Now, when we're plotting two different measurable variables on the same chart, we refer to them as series. So this particular chart has two series. And if you click on the filter button, you can control which of the series are shown. So for instance, you can say, I only want to see the first series. So I'm going to uncheck cumulative cost and click apply. And it just shows me one series and I can put that back again just as easily just by selecting it and apply. Another important point here is that if I want to remove one of the series, I would just deselect it from the list of fields on the right. Another important point here is that if I wanted to remove one of the series, I could just deselect it from one of the fields on the right. And if I wanted to add a third series, all I'd need to do would be to check one of the fields here and that will add that in. Something else that you may need or want to do is to format the axes on one of the charts. So let me select the horizontal axis on this chart. And if I right click, one of the options is Format Axis. And you'll see I get the Format Axis panel open up on the right hand side. It's also worth pointing out that in this Format Axis panel, I have an Axis Options drop down. So if I click, there are lots of different elements that I can format. So just be aware that that's there as well. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select Horizontal Category Axis. Usually Project 2019 will set these for you automatically, but if you want to change them, you can. But before you start doing any specific work on the horizontal axis, in this case, bear in mind that you're looking at the category for this chart. If you go up to the Select Category dropdown, you can see we've got Time selected and click on Edit. It will let you change the time scale. Now, changing the time scale is very different from changing the formatting of the axis. And normally you need to make sure that you choose your time scale first. Now, at the moment, the way that this time scale is arranged is it's in units of weeks, but not single weeks. It's arranged in a period of two weeks. Now, one very important point to make here is that although the time scale says that this particular axis is going to be graduated in periods of two weeks, Project 2019 has decided that that's going to make things a bit too crowded. So when it's come to format it, it's only showing alternate values. So you actually find that the intervals on the horizontal axis are periods of four weeks, not two weeks. Supposing I wanted to change this from weeks to months and I wanted to change the date format to just show the month like January 2017, for example. And let's suppose I'm going to try showing one month at a time. So I'm going to click on units and I'm going to select months and I'm going to click on date format and I'm going to select this date format just here and I'm going to click on OK, so let's just close down some of this so we can see what we have behind. And now you can see that that looks very different. We, in fact, have given ourselves a little bit more room. And these are now in intervals of two months. Now, having done that, of course, you can still go into the format axis and do all the things you can do to format the axis, such as coloring the text, changing the gap between the chart and the labels and so on. But let me just go back to the original time scale because that's the one that you'll probably see on your version of the cost overview. So let me just take a look at one or two of the things I might do to format this axis in line with what I just described. If in the format axis panel, so I'm going to jump across into the data group and underneath axis options, we have a sub menu of number. Note that the category recognized here is general. So let me say specifically that it's a date. And if I go up to the labels, notice the interval between the labels. It's currently set to automatic. If I specify the interval unit as one, I will now see the dates on the horizontal axis will be units of one. And of course, this one unit refers to one period of two weeks because that's the unit we defined on the horizontal time axis. So if you now look at the horizontal axis, it goes from the 25th of March all the way through to the 16th of December 2019. 
and that is it's agreeing exactly what we specified for this category. If I now want to go back into that and say change the labels not to be at intervals of one time unit, but say intervals of four time units, again, I can click back into here and I can change that to four. And again, it's now much less crowded with the labeling on the horizontal axis. Let's now look at the other chart in the cost overview report. This one is also a combination chart, but this time it has three data series. Two of them are showing as stacked columns, and one of them is done as a line with markers, and they all use the same access because they're basically cost variables. Now, one of the types of reports that you can see in Project 2019 is a burn down report. And nowadays, many project managers are very keen on these burn down reports because what they show you, usually in a pretty straightforward snapshot, is some aspect comparing what is happening with what should be happening. So let's go up to reports and we're going to go to dashboards and we're going to select burn down. Now, this is a standard burn down report from Project 2019. Sometimes the text that accompanies these reports is, shall I say, a little bit confusing. But let me just explain one of these burn down reports. Look at the right hand one. This is the remaining tasks burn down. And what this report shows is a simple sequence of straight lines showing how many tasks remain at any point in time. And obviously the number of remaining tasks diminishes as you go through the project. And the orange line is what is actually happening. So what we can see on this chart is the orange line is a forecast for how they're going to drop. That's using the current plan. The blue is the baseline for how they're going to drop. And of course, we need to make sure that the orange and the blue stay in step as closely as possible, which we haven't done on this one. And generally speaking, you don't want the orange to be above the blue in this case. So we definitely have some work to do on this burn down report. Now, that's a typical kind of burn down report. And once you get used to using them, they're a very simple way of looking at how things have happened so far and seeing what is likely to happen in the future in those reasonably simple terms. So we've looked in this section at some aspects of what I'd call targeted reporting. In the next section, we've got a few more to look at, so please join me for that. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. Now, to get a free Microsoft Project 2019 course, including downloadable exercise files, go ahead and click right over there. And click right over there to watch all the videos in this Project 2019 Beginners Playlist.